Hi, so my name's Phil, and I like talking about politics. And today was a very important day in the Remain campaign because we had the People's Vote March. And uh, last October, there was a, a march for another referendum. And there were between half a million, 670,000, depending on who you asked there. So how did it go today? Well, the numbers, the, the more independent estimates of the numbers will have to come later, but it's looking like round about a million. Obviously, fiendishly difficult to get anything like accurate numbers. Of course, the campaign will say over a million, but they're biased. And there's a certain appeal in an arbitrarily um, pleasant number like a million. It's, it could have been 998,000 for all we know. No, I'll just call it a million. Um, so we'll wait for more independent estimates, as I say. However, what can be said is that it was definitely grander than last October's March, and that was pretty impressive. In fact, there were so many that the police had to get the earlier marchers to start early before they were going to because of the potential for a crush behind them as more and more people flooded into the city, far more than uh, the police had the capacity to deal with. So let's have a look at a few images. So first of all, a uh, nice little banner. We've had these popping up all over the country from Led by Donkeys, a, a political campaign, obviously very much Remain leaning. In this particular case, it, what it does is it sort of um, quotes prominent Brexiteers, in especially in terms of what they were saying before the referendum. Here's David Davis. If a democracy cannot change its mind, it ceases to be a democracy. Now, of course, what he was trying to suggest there is we'd had a, demo uh, a referendum on uh, being a member of the EC and and we voted to remain within it and he's going oh we should have another one because of course we've got to be able to change our minds they changed their tune straight after it apparently now to have another referendum after a couple of years and after um we've had a chance to actually see what the result of it is all of a sudden that's an undemocratic you know um and, and again you still keep getting these oh it's undemocratic not to do this but it's the whole nature of democracy is you actually have elections and you have regular elections. The whole point is you vote for a bunch of monkeys to parliament who stand on their manifesto and you go, oh yeah, I like the sound of those policies. We'll, we'll vote for you. You go ahead. And then a few years later, once you've actually seen the reality of it, it's like, oh God, no, I didn't want that. And then you vote the monkeys out of parliament. That's how parliamentary democracy works. Well, there's no difference with a referendum. People thought that they wanted to vote for the, the ridiculous uh, future that was being promised to them. But now many people have actually seen, no, that future doesn't exist. It's not actually legal. It's not possible. It makes no sense. They've seen the reality of what Brexit means and uh, they want to say, have another say. That is democracy. Another little image here. So showing some banners. So obviously a lot of people aren't just randomly going there. They've got banners out with uh, messages on there. As well, this one, this is my favourite. I have seen some really good ones, actually. But I quite liked this one. Um, uh, Brexit is a headless chicken wing ride. Anyway, yeah, so we get to an image like this. Now, I'm sure it's an image of this sort that the media will mostly try to use. The problem with this, although it shows a ridiculous number of people, and it's quite clear what they're demonstrating for, nonetheless... It doesn't show you the full extent. It looks like, oh yeah, that's a large demonstration. However, what we really need is something like this. That's a demonstration. That is a lot of people. My goodness. But of course, just like the BBC, I will, in the name of balance, explain that there was a counter-protest to this. There was the march to leave. Nigel Farage Lee leading a much larger group of people into London to campaign for leaving the EU. There it is. Note that as he's talking to his supporters, a little bit more about what he said in a minute, as he's talking to his supporters, that's what he's doing, talking to his supporters. No need for a microphone there. They could all hear him. Maybe he had to speak up a little bit because he's on top of a bus. Uh, now we go back to the people's vote and the people speaking there, of which there were many, needed a sound studio with PA set up and large screens so that some of the people there had some chance of being able to see and hear what they were saying. And another, I like this, this meme on the left here. So again, what they've been trying to explain to us is actually the Brexiteers represent the will of the people. Brexit is the will of the people and the people remain as are oh, the citizens of nowhere was the phrase used. Well, as it shows there, the will of the people is... What someone suggested to me on Twitter is actually just a large pub crawl 
Whereas the citizens of nowhere were definitely somewhere today. They were in London. Well, they still are at the time I'm doing this. Um, and they're all over London. Look at the state of it. So the contrast couldn't be more stark. And what do Leave supporters have to say? When, when you present them with this undeniable disparity between the pro-Brexit demonstration and the referendum de demonstration. And let's be fair, this is calling for a second referendum. There could be people who wish to leave in that demonstration as well. But let's not kid ourselves that they're a majority. Well, they say, oh, we don't need to march because we've already won. Well, I didn't notice them marching before they'd won. And have they won? Because I'll tell you what, the prominent Brexiteers are panicking at the moment. They've been panicking for a few months now. Very seriously, publicly saying that they don't believe it's going to happen. There's been a lot of Brexiteers saying, oh, I don't think it's going to happen, it's not going to happen. So have you won? And what have you won? An illegal referendum? What about the fact that no deal is not legally possible? Even the ERG were suggesting that we keep no deal on the table as a negotiating tool, not as a desired outcome, even though we know that's what they really want. Parliament voted against no deal very recently by a hefty margin. Now, yes, they keep saying that voting against it doesn't actually change the default position. Well, hmm, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But nonetheless, it shows what they intend. Parliament won't vote for May's deal. In fact, Theresa May, it's been reported, may not even put that up for a vote because she may now be accepting that it is not going to go through. The EU have said that they will not renegotiate a single line of the agreement. That means for all Jeremy Corbyn's talk of positive talks in Brussels this week, where he at least didn't embarrass himself like our Prime Minister. And, and, and let's be fair about his proposals. They would form the starting point of much stronger system of actually enacting Brexit and more importantly, a legal way to do it. But the fact of the matter is, the withdrawal agreement is as it is. Now, it, that withdrawal agreement doesn't stop him then implementing those things. But the issue is, of course, he's not in power. He doesn't have the MPs to be able to push that anyway. Um, only the government can actually carry out those negotiations. So even though the EU would be happy about them, they're not going to do anything. They can't do anything. And speaking of Jeremy Corbyn, what did he have to say at the People's March? Nothing. He wasn't there. You know, I was appalled last night, actually, because I saw a tweet from the Labour Party asking what supporters were up to this weekend and encouraging them to get involved in local party matters. And to think that Labour's official policy is to support a people's vote. Now, apart from anything else, for Jeremy Corbyn, the people's vote is a local party matter because it was happening in London and he's based in London. We had Nicola Sturgeon, for goodness sake, coming from Scotland to speak. Where was he? Now, I'm sorry, everyone can now stop defending him on this issue at least. He has lied. He's lied about supporting what the majority of Labour supporters have said they want him to do. What they want to get behind, what they want him to get behind. He's a disgrace to the party. Yes, I know there's a lot of members who have been waiting for a while for what they consider a proper left-wing leader. But he is not your guy. He lacks the competence to remove the Conservatives from office which is an exceedingly dangerous prospect and he lacks the sense of honour to be worthy of anyone's support. Now, there were plenty of Labour MPs there at the event. The deputy leader, Tom Watson, spoke, for example, but of Jeremy Corbyn, who lives in London, like I say, I haven't seen any reports he was there. And I'm quite sure that if he were speaking there, I would have come across those. I've not seen tweets from the Labour Party about it. I've not seen tweets from him about it. And I would have seen something. But back to more important matters. So when Parliament sits next week, it will be with a public petition of millions. And after a weekend when a million people swarm the streets to call for a people's vote. If any MP next week even dares to suggest that Brexit is the will of the people, I expect the rest of the House to shout them down loudly. Do not let them get away with it. The outpouring of the people's will has been massive. However... My hopes of parliamentary um, or parliament abandoning party politics, shall we say, next week may be pure optimism. Although there were quite a lot of MPs there, I didn't see many Conservative ones mentioned. Now, they're not completely absent. 
There was at least one Tory peer in the form of Michael Heseltine, and he spoke there. Dominic Grieve, the former Attorney General, and he's an MP, he was also there. So the Parliamentary Conservative Party was represented at least there, thank goodness. I'd like to think there would have been others too that I just haven't seen reported. But the thing is that other parties, including the SNP, were robustly represented. But the lack of a very visible presence from the front benches of both Labour, it has to be said, and the Conservatives was disappointing. Yes, I know I said Tom Watson was speaking there, and he's technically on the front bench, but he's elected by the supporters of Labour, not appointed by Jeremy Corbyn. Now, I would like to think that some of his shadow cabinet were there too, but I haven't seen them. Well, I wasn't going to see them in person, I'm not there, but I haven't seen them mentioned or seen anything on Twitter or anything like that either. Now, in terms of what this could mean, a demonstration of just a few thousand is usually enough to get Parliament to at least pay attention to an issue normally. This was a million people spending good money and a lot of time to come in from all over the country. There's no rich foreign benefactors for this campaign. People had to pay for those coaches themselves and they were not cheap. I, you know, obviously I was trying to find if there's one anywhere near me going down there. Unfortunately, I'm in a bit of a black spot for this. There were people coming from as far as north of Scotland. They, they, they had no sleep. They've had zero sleep. And uh, they've also paid the most money as well to get there. They've still gone down there. And it's very, very encouraging. You know, meanwhile, with Farage's march to leave, so he told his crowd, if we can call it that, uh, that those marching in London were not the majority. Well, that's debatable. But I'm pretty bloody sure that his supporters certainly aren't the majority. As someone suggested to me on Twitter, as I said earlier, it's really just a pub crawl, what he's got. But I'll tell you something. Where the People's March is definitely a majority is in that it shows that having another referendum is what more people care about than anything else. There are plenty of people in the country that don't really care about any political issue at all. And, and that's up to them. That's their right as free citizens. There are some people who actually believe and care about leaving the EU. But nobody cares about any other issue in the UK right now than having that second referendum. And that is a fact, because in October, we had the second largest political demonstration there's ever been. Today, we had a new second largest demonstration there's ever been, and it's both on the same issue. What's the largest? That was the Stop the Iraq War demonstration. Um, but here we've had twice now on the same issue for another referendum, the second and third placed largest political demonstrations in this country. So it's not just the issue demonstrably that more people care about than any other issue. It's the second most cared about in history, in British history anyway. So finally, just a little appeal. Being an ignorant Brit, I'm afraid I don't speak and, and more importantly, read non-English languages very well. So if people would like to let me know what the non-UK media make of all this in reports later or tomorrow, then I would be grateful. I'd actually be very interested in seeing how this is perceived elsewhere as well. So there we go. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe for further content and click the bell notification as well. Until next time, I'll see you later.